Aloha everyone, welcome. I'm Abaya and I'm so excited to practice with you today. Um, we're going to be focusing on the floor of our core, so an area that doesn't really get a lot of love or attention, but it's so essential. It connects our legs to one another, it connects our legs into our core and our torso. Um, and today is going to help us build more awareness there so that it supports us better and we can feel stronger and lighter and more buoyant. Um, so I just want to show you one thing. This is a review from last week. When you inhale, your diaphragm pushes down and your pelvic floor in a healthy body also pushes down. When you exhale, the diaphragm gently lifts and the pelvic floor gently lifts. So I wanted you to have that visual. We're going to be doing a lot of things so that you can feel that and explore it for yourself. And we'll start with our, our special movement that we come back to um, over and over through class today, our gathering of energy and our offering it up. And so we'll start with the first half, um, the gathering. And this is going to be done on an inhale. Of course, always do what feels best for you. Um, but as you explore this first part, inhale and feel the whole body and expand. And imagine you're like inviting nourishment into your space. You're inviting good energy. You're inviting restoration. Whatever it is that you want through your practice, imagine you're inviting it here. Remember, the inhale is when everything is gently pushing down, and you don't have to do that or think about it. It's just naturally happening. And then the second part of this, after you inhale and encircle the body, you'll exhale and start to squeeze the legs together, and it's going to allow the spine to elongate, and the arms will effortlessly lift up. So let's try that. The inhale, you know now. And then the exhale, the legs squeeze. That's the first part of the action. And then everything else follows from that. Try a few on your own. And try to feel how the squeezing of the legs helps you lift and lengthen the spine effortlessly. We'll do just one more. And then pause in that lifted position. Let the arms be soft. And um, make sure you're not over squeezing with the legs. You want to feel like if I said, OK, stay here for five minutes, it'd be super easy, no problem. So take a couple of breaths here. And then turn to your left and gently start to make your way onto your belly. Stack the hands, elbows wide, forehead to hands. And after all that squeezing with the legs, let the feet separate and let all the muscles in the legs relax. If you need a little help here, you can wag your tail from side to side and that will subtly internally and externally rotate the thigh bones. And then start to still the body something we've been focusing on our in our meditation practice is when the body is still how easy it is to feel the breath. And there's even an appetite for the experience of the breath. Takayo, is everything okay? Feel free to type in the chat box if you need help. Satyam is here for you. And I am too. Oh, I think she just texted. My phone's over here, Satyam. Um, and so... Without changing the breath, just bring the focus to the natural expansion that occurs as you inhale. This is when the pelvic floor gently presses down as the organs are pushing down into it. And I can't remember if I said that right. So that's the inhale, just in case I said the opposite. And then the exhale, as you relax completely, and the breath leaves the body, and there's this ever so gentle knitting together, pulling back to center as the pelvic floor gently lifts, the diaphragm gently lifts. You might feel a little extra length through the spine. Let's just take a few more breaths on our own so that you can Feel the sensation of the breath massaging the belly, massaging the spine.
And then gently start to reach the hands overhead. If you're following along with the music, you can hit play on the first track and make sure it's set to loop. And then bring the forehead to your blanket. Um, if I didn't say this earlier, make sure there's a blanket spread out because we're going to need it for gliding our feet and legs on throughout class. And so from this centered position, you can keep your arms where they are. I find it's not very comfortable to slide my arms here, but it is comfortable to slide my feet. So as you inhale, energetically draw the arms wider. They don't have to move. Let the feet open kind of like a snow angel. And then as you exhale, draw the feet back together and notice how that sensation allows everything to pull towards the spine, elongating all the way up through the neck and all the way to the hands. So each inhale, that gentle opening, the hands don't have to go far, but the feet will move. And then exhale, everything draws back towards center. Bonus points, if you can keep your pelvis level and neutral as you do this. You'll know that the pelvis is level if it actually takes core strength to do this gentle movement. You'll feel that little gentle corseting. Um, the transversus abdominis, that corset muscle, actually works in conjunction with a healthy pelvic floor. And the next time everything squeezes together, pause there and take one full breath in and out. Try to stay relaxed. We never want gripping or tensing really anywhere, but especially not with the pelvic floor. Drag the right hand underneath the shoulder, push into the right hand to pull to roll onto the left side. And then ever so gently start to rock forward and back. And less is more here. We're really not doing anything with the body instead we we want to soften and relax and um, i find if i have something kinked in my body and i do this without any doership and i really relax sometimes my body resets it might not go back to a hundred uh, but at least that sort of five alarm feeling goes away Feel free to close the eyes so that you can tune into the breath and make any adjustments so that the arm, hips, knees, whatever, feel as comfortable as possible. And that's true in any pose, right? I might cue something that doesn't feel good. It's up to you to notice that and adapt. Everything should feel awesome that we do. Like you're paying like a lot of money for it to happen. <laughs> Come to center, flex the feet so you start to feel a little stronger and more stable. With your next inhale, push down into the left leg so the right leg hovers. And then exhale, slowly squeeze the legs together and notice how that allows you to elongate the spine so much that you can effortlessly hover the neck and head. And we're gonna pulse between those two movements a few times. So the inhale, nice, easy lift with the leg. It really comes from pushing down with the bottom leg. And then the exhale is the action we've been practicing, that gentle squeezing that's really more about lengthening through the spine. And it should feel effortless, almost like when you watch a sea turtle floating in the ocean. And even though they're so strong, it just seems like they're not using any energy to move. That's the energy we want to use here. Roseanne will be really good at that because she's an expert in all sea turtle things. <laughs> and the next time you lift the upper body, pause there, hover the top hand, just so there's that moment of having to balance and it, it should feel like there's a little strength at your center. Keep that sense of strength as you lower the head and then put the hand wherever is comfortable. Everything stays still. The only thing that moves is the top leg. Bend the top knee and start to make some circles. And it's not about moving far here. In fact, um, the real magic happens when you keep the rest of your body completely still. That includes your pelvis too, right? So um, start to notice 
something really special about the pelvic floor, start to notice how the movement in the top leg relates to the bottom leg. You might feel the inner thigh of the bottom leg fire at certain parts. You might feel your core engaged to support you. That's because the pelvic floor is turning on and sending those signals up to the rest of your buoyant core. You can circle a couple times in the opposite direction, which often feels a little tricky, so be patient with yourself. And then lower the knee in front of you. And if you have sensitive knees, use your hand to support coming in and out of this movement. Otherwise, you can do it all with the leg, um, but just be honest and careful with yourself. So inhale, start to glide the knee open, kind of like a, a tree pose with the foot away from the leg. And then as you exhale, push down into the left leg so you can slide the right leg back in. Allow the heart to start to open and let the hand naturally spiral behind you. And we'll play between those two shapes. So the inhale opens the hip. You don't want any pressure in the knee there. So the more you push with the right hand, the more support you'll have in the knee. And then the exhale, the inner thighs ever so gently squeeze to initiate the rolling open movement. And we're gonna take some time here. This, there's a lot of magic in this movement. So start to um, enjoy it, sync it with your own breath. You can add anything on, maybe a hover with the top leg or a circle with the top arm. Maybe you wanna come all the way on to the belly. There's really no rules. I'm just giving you um, some trails to walk and then maybe you'll discover some beautiful scenery that you want to explore that's always fair game. And the next time the hip starts to open, let yourself go all the way onto the belly. Pause with the hip open if that feels safe. If it doesn't, you can extend the leg behind you. I actually really love this position though. It's sort of like, like a fallen tree can imagine yourself being embedded in the earth, covered in moss. Take a couple of breaths. And then support yourself so that you can extend the right leg back without too much pressure on that knee. Hands stack, elbows wide, and just notice the sensations through the body. You can wiggle the hips a little bit from side to side or just enjoy the stillness. And then we'll head over to the second side. And you're not going to be facing me, but we'll be doing all the same stuff. So you should be able to follow. You can always turn to face me if it's too tricky. And so um, let's begin by extending the right arm, dragging the left hand underneath the shoulder. Push into the left hand to roll away from me. And now we massage the right side of the body. And this should feel extra good after all that work you did in the right hip it might feel like ooh, I, I really want to massage that outer thigh that outer hip roll back a little bit and get the glute whatever feels nourishing and interesting to you and it's always helpful to move slower than you think you need to see if you can feel the breath as you move. I find that it's like I have to zoom out and get bigger than my body to observe the movement and the sensation and the breath all at once. And the next time you rock back, pause there, flex the feet, find that moment of stability, hover the top hand, and notice how the core naturally brightens here. It should feel really easy, but there is still a strength and this is really our goal throughout our class today, that our strength is really natural and there's no gripping, there's no extra effort in our muscles. Place the hand wherever is comfortable. Inhale, hover the top leg just a little bit. And then exhale, start to feel the legs uniting towards one another. Use that strength up the spine to effortlessly lift the head. You don't want to feel the work in the neck. You really want to feel it in the core. Inhale, head down, foot up, and then exhale, kind of like a mermaid. The legs come together and you're able to lift the torso. Take a couple on your own as gently 
as possible. If you feel it in one place, like the outer hip or the side of the neck, it means you're going too far. And it means the core muscles aren't doing the work. The superficial muscles are, and that's not really beneficial for our, our purposes today. The next time the upper body lifts, pause there, take a couple of breaths, and then keep that strength as you lower the head, bend the left knee, we take the circles with the top leg, and remember, it's about feeling supported, keeping the whole body still, the more still the body is, the more stability we're cultivating in that left hip socket. And most of us need more stability. Even if you have tight hips, the tightness often comes from weakness. So the more stability you cultivate, the more those muscles can relax and you'll feel buoyant and light as well as strong and supported. Circle the other way. Nice and easy. You really don't want to feel it at the joint. And then bring the knee in front of you. And we use the inhale to slide open. Support yourself as much as you need to with the left hand to take any pressure out of the left knee. And then the exhale, you push down, squeezing everything together, letting the body spiral open. And play between those two shapes. Inhale to... Slide open and exhale to squeeze and let the upper body open towards the sky. And just like we practice kneeling in the very first part of class, try to let the legs initiate the movement and feel how the rest of the body can follow that, right? Almost like a ribbon like in rhythmic gymnastics where you have the handle and you move the handle and then the whole ribbon um, follows the expression of the handle. The next time you open, let the torso come face down. The left knee can stay pointed out in our fallen tree or you can extend the leg behind you, whatever feels comfortable. This used to be way too much in my hip and it didn't feel safe. So if there's a question mark, like you're not sure, I recommend straightening the leg behind you and then just be kind and patient. You'll get there eventually. Now let's all extend that left leg straight back. If you haven't, take one moment at center. You can stack the hands if that feels more spacious for the breath and try to let go of everything. You don't need to assess. Just let yourself be present with the breath. And we're going to build on that movement from earlier in class. So extend the, the arms overhead. As we inhale, let the feet open, energetically drag the arms wide. And then as you exhale, squeeze the legs together, squeeze the arms back to center. But this time, let the spine start to lengthen and lift in a supported cobra. From there, drag the hands back, energetically keep them pulling back and see if that helps you get a little more length. Um, gaze down so the back of the neck is nice and relaxed. You can gaze to the right, gaze to the left, and then set the head down. Inhale to slide the feet open. Hands can stay where they are. Exhale, squeeze the feet back together. Let that strength travel up the spine so that you can effortlessly lift into Cobra. And now repeat with your own breath, inhaling for the spaciousness. And then exhale for that energetic feeling of support and lightness. Maybe you're even starting to notice that exhale sensation of the pelvic floor lifting. It's okay if you're not, but just bringing the awareness down to the base of the core can help those muscles start to um, wake up and play their role. One more. And the next time you lift, this is optional, but if you feel light and buoyant here, you can make some little circles with the spine. You don't want to feel this in one vertebra, but rather the whole spine swaying and releasing forward, swaying the other way. And then let's all change the direction of those circles. 
And then come to center, push into the hands, send the hips all the way back to the heels, resting pose here. So if Bhaktasana is not comfortable, you can do a cat pose or anything else that the body is craving. Just make sure this feels restful. And then we'll come back to our gathering and offering up from the beginning of class. So push down into the knees, slowly roll up, make a big circle with your arms and then lift the hands overhead. You can go three quarters just so you can see me better. We're gonna do a few of these. So send the hips back like a kneeling chair pose. Inhale, circle the arms forward, gathering the energy, and then exhale, squeeze the inner thighs together. Notice how that just sends the whole body upward and let that energy travel all the way up to your highest self. Take a few on your own. Inhale for the big circle, folding forward, and then exhale, initiate the movement with the squeeze, and notice how the movement just travels effortlessly all the way up the spine. If your knees are sensitive, now is a great time to grab a blanket. Even if your knees aren't sensitive, um, it's a kind thing to do for your body. And then take a couple more. And because we've gone through this movement a few times, see if you can start to let go of any control and just feel the flow of the movement. Like your body is a school of fish and all the individual fish are traveling in the same direction so effortlessly. And the next time you come all the way up to kneeling, pause there, you can keep breathing, but try to connect to that feeling of space and lightness on both the in breath and the out breath. And release the arms down. Um, grab a sip of water if you'd like. Go to the second track if you're following along with the music. All right. So you can stay this three quarters way so that it's easier to see me if that works best for you. Um, let us begin in tabletop. And take a moment just pawing out the mat. If you've got sensitive wrists, you can come to forearms. That's totally fine here, so it's up to you. We're just waking up the shoulders a little bit. Feel free to adjust where the knees are and bring some awareness to your spine. Everybody looks really good. We're just finding a neutral spine, so sometimes we're in an extra arch. See if you can find that length instead. And then, um, We'll all lower to forearms. This actually helps engage the core a little bit more. Start to glide the right leg back and take a few pulses here. Just like our other movements, keep the rest of the body totally still and notice the amount of stability that it requires to move the right leg without jutting the left hip out over to the left. The next time the leg lifts, um, keep the pelvis still and start to circle the leg. Again, it's going to feel limited, especially if you're used to being very mobile. Start to notice any sense of warmth on that left hip. So that's the one that's not moving, right? Well, that might feel like a surprise. And then kick the right leg off to the side, setting up for Parigasana. And before we go anywhere, um, just send the hips forward and back, starting to feel into that right leg. If you feel it a lot at the joint, so namely the right knee, push down a little extra with the right foot, even heel, it, heel toe it in a little bit. Um, we really don't want to be stretching at the joint. It can also help to use the exhale, dragging the foot in, just like we've been practicing, uniting it to the left leg and the pelvic floor. And then come on to the hands. Um, use your next exhale to squeeze the foot towards the knee and we'll, um, we'll gather the energy like we've been practicing and then squeeze everything together to rise all the way up. We'll sync that with the breath now. So the inhale sends you forward, big circle. 
And then the exhale, squeeze foot and knee together and let that send the impulse all the way up the spine, making it as effortless as possible. It doesn't matter how far you go forward or up. Ease is the name of the game. And there's so much hidden strength in that quality of ease. The next time you circle forward, it's up to you if you're on hands or forearms. Um, start to glide the right foot off to the side so it's going further away from the knee. And then use your exhale to drag it back in, almost like zipping up a zipper. Do that a few times. You don't need to go super far to let the foot go out, but try to feel that exhale sensation um, as you drag the foot back in and see how far up the spine you can feel that connection. At first it might be at the hip socket, but eventually you might feel it all the way up the spine as the leg drags back in. The next time the leg drags back in, use that energy to travel all the way up into Parigasana, and it might feel like a lot less open than you're used to and a lot more upwardly spacious. That's what we want. Keep that strength and make some little circles. The legs aren't really going to move much here. We really want to use that sense of the pelvic floor connecting the legs to help us find more freedom in the spine. And then just for fun, heel toe the foot forward so you're in a 90-90 lunge. Anchor the big toe. We're going to be doing some balancing later, so I want you to wake up um, the feet to anchor the big toe. Let the knee start to point towards the pinky side of the foot. That's going to turn on the glute a little bit. Um, take a couple of lunges, just bending just a little bit. And then we'll do um, that squeezing together to lengthen the spine and reach up. Take a couple of breaths here. And then bring the right leg in and either toes tucked under, which can be intense, so it's not for everyone, or toes flat. Come to kneeling just to absorb that sequence on the first side. And let all your focus be on your breath. So we'll start from kneeling gathering the energy with an inhale and then exhale squeeze inner thighs together and let everything open up take two more on your own as effortlessly as possible trying to feel the unity and fluidity of your mo movement and then the next time you're up, you can take a couple of breaths, just feeling that ever so gentle hugging in of the thighs, that lifting of the pelvic floor. And then release the hands down to um, tabletop option for forearms, that's fine. And then start to slide the left leg back and take a couple of pulses, lifting the left foot up. Try to avoid rocking the pelvis forward as you do this. Let it all come from the strength of the glute lifting the leg. The next time the leg lifts, keep the pelvis stable as you start to circle the knee. I'm gonna turn because I think that might be a better view. And then circle the other way and let go of any impulse to want to make as big of circles as possible. Instead, try to feel how the left leg integrates into the core, integrates into the right leg, and then kick the left leg off to the side in that Parigasana setup and start to rock forward and back. Lower to the forearms if you need to. Look at the left foot. Um, try to bring the outer edge of the foot so that pinky side of the foot down to the mat and see if there's that sweet little lift of the arch it's not dramatic it's just like the little tiny cave opening and then um, drag the foot in so there's that strength to lift the spine circle the arms forward and up and take a couple of those circling forward and then dragging the foot in as you exhale. It's 
See if you can feel this movement. Rise up one vertebra at a time. And the next time the hands come down, release them all the way and let the left foot start to slide off to the side. As you exhale, squeeze the inner thighs together and let the spine lengthen. Do this a few times on your own in each repetition. See if you can feel that connection to a higher vertebra. So the movement travels far beyond the base of the pelvis. The next time the leg is sliding in, use that energy to come all the way up and just notice how much strength and lift you have when we shift the perspective um, away from stretching. Use that strength to start to circle just the upper body. And you're not going to go very far, right? Because the legs and hips aren't moving. Sometimes we feel like we're really mobile. And that's happening because we're actually um, overcompensating in areas that we don't actually want to move. So this type of movement instead keeps us really honest and strengthens the areas that don't get a lot of love either otherwise. And then start to heel toe the foot in front of you. Anchor the left big toe this time. Let the knee drift wide, keeping the big toe down. So it's almost like a tug of war between the toe anchoring and the knee opening. And that's going to fire up the glute. Take a couple of little lunges there. You can move the foot around, wake the ankle up, and then start to feel that sense of dragging the foot in towards the back knee and notice if that can help you lift and lengthen. And take a couple of breaths in that nice elongated Anjani Asana. If you're feeling it a lot in one leg, see if you can disperse the work so you feel both legs working evenly, united by the fabric of the pelvic floor. And then bring the foot in and toes tucked or flat. We'll just take a moment to absorb before we travel to standing. And let everything go. And just connect to the breath. See if you can feel it down to the diaphragm and then all the way down to the pelvic diaphragm, which is another word for the muscle group we've been talking about. While you're close to the floor, feel free to have another sip of water. You can head to the third track now on the playlist. If you used a blanket for your knees, place it over to the side. We won't need it till the end of class. And then lift the knees so you're in a little crouch. We'll be heading towards a forward fold. So you can let the hips start to lift and come into a forward fold however is comfortable for you. I like to keep a deep bend in the knees so there's no pulling on the low back. And then just like we've been practicing, start to energetically drag the feet together and notice how there's this buoyancy in the spine. It's almost like um, you're like a suction cup and the spine starts to puff away from the earth and then release that. And try that a couple times, inhaling for the release and then exhaling as you drag the feet together, letting the back body puff up. The next time you puff up like a little jellyfish, push down into the feet. Let the sits bones drop so the spine slowly rolls up and the hands can float. And then we'll add on the arms that we've been practicing. So bend the knees, drop the arms, inhale to gather energy, big sweeping motion, and then exhale, squeeze the feet together and let that roll up the spine as the hands come overhead. Take a few on your own as effortlessly as possible. And now um, try to feel how the impetus starts all the way at the soles of the feet, right? It's the squeezing of the feet and then the pushing down. Nice, Roseanne, that looks so fluid. Great, Takayo, I love that momentum all the way up. You're like a, a wave cresting.
And the next time you're all the way up, pause in that straight line shape. Make sure the shoulders are soft. And just take a couple of breaths, nice and easy here. And something that's really important, you can release the arms down um, and turn to face me. Something that's really important as we work with the pelvic floor, and we're doing a lot of things that are, um, are strengthening, that's that lifting action. Um, we also need to be able to let it go and release. So in these moments when we hold, um, if you feel yourself gripping in any way, see if you can soften um, because it, it, both sides of the coin are really important. Um, if you haven't already turned to face me, please join me at the long edge of the mat for our standing sequence. Um, so we'll play with the curtsies that we do so often in class. Uh, but what's going to be really interesting in today's curtsies is feeling that interaction of the legs gently squeezing so that you feel a lot of support along the spine. Um, so let's start by bending the right knee, keeping that strength in the right leg as you glide the left foot behind you. Feel that little squeeze and use it to lengthen the spine. And then we'll inhale open to a big star and we'll exhale to go the other way. And you can move at your own pace nice and slow. Then just getting really interested in that sensation of the legs working together to better support the spine. So you feel really even and balanced and, and so light like the prima ballerina. Take one more to each side. And then we'll all meet on that first side with the right leg forward for our next movement. So um, take a couple of nice easy bounces. Make sure that you don't feel that in your knees, but it's just like a lightness through the spine. And then start to push into the front leg and see if you can use that inner thigh pulling together to hover the left foot. It is okay for the left foot to come to the leg, but you might not even need it because there's so much lightness in this area. And we'll take a few pulses like that. And the next movement I want to demo before you try it, from the curtsy, instead of going to tree, we're going to go through tree and let the foot step out into a short Virabhadrasana 2. And it should feel really stable, right? It's that sensation of feeling connected and drawing up through the center. So when you feel ready for that, um, you can play with it a couple of times. I really like the moment of dragging the foot back into the curtsy to activate that center line and then keeping it strong as I step out. You can add a little wave. I notice that my body is craving that. Let's all meet in Virabhadrasana 2, starting to play with this waving action that is possible when the legs feel really strong and the spine feels really light. And the next uh, time you start to wave to the left, shift the weight into the left foot and now use that work we've been doing to float the back leg in a Ardha Chandrasana prep pose. And take a moment here, bounce the leg a couple of times. And then step the right foot back, turn to face me, all 10 toes face me, and bend the right knee. Normally, and don't do this yet, normally we reach down towards the foot. Instead, use the strength we've been cultivating to reach over to the right, but feel how the strength of your legs allows you to really reach out. And then reach down towards center into Prasarta Padottanasana. Bend the knees really, really deeply. Hands can be on the legs if that's more comfortable. Make sure the toes are pointed forward. If it's more comfortable for you to have blocks, feel free to grab that. Sway hips from side to side. And then heel toe the feet in so they're parallel underneath the hips. And we'll rise up by squeezing the feet together and letting the spine unfurl. Hands reach up. 
and we'll prepare for the second side. Um, so step the feet wide, relax the arms down, start to bend into the left knee. Take a couple of bends here and try to feel the left heel anchoring so there's no pressure in the knee. And the next time you bend into the knee, shift the weight and glide the right foot behind you. Take a practice perch with the tree. And then as you're ready, you can start to play with stepping out. Less is more at first because you don't want any jostling in the knee. You don't want it to feel like thunk, you know, and pressure in the knee. That's not good. And then if you want to glide the foot back for a little extra core strengthening, you can. And the next time you step out, pause there and start to sway the spine from side to side. Um, if you need to turn the back toes in slightly, feel free to do that. Um, I find it pretty magical looking out at you guys that the foot lands in a really safe place because you've been getting there with all those muscles on, right? So it's not going to end up in a weird place. The next time the right knee bends, start to shift the weight and use that dragging together action to lift the back leg. You can reach the arms out if you want to, even though that's kind of tricky. Try to stay light, bend the knee a couple of times and then set the left foot down, turn all 10 toes towards me, bend the left knee and then Squeeze the inner thighs together as you reach all the way up and over to the left. And then down towards the left thigh or knee or foot and towards center. Hands can come to the thighs or shins or floor or blocks. Feel free to pause in your forward fold or sway from side to side. And then heel toe the feet together squeeze them towards one another so that you can effortlessly rise all the way up just like we've been practicing pause at the top float the arms down and bring hands to heart center close the eyes if that feels comfortable and just take a couple of breaths here notice any sense of awareness that you've built up from the feet to the pelvic floor and then any lightness through the spine. And we'll close our standing sequence with a little bit of goddess pose, which is sort of like the ultimate um, way to incorporate our pelvic floor. So slide the feet wide and then turn the toes out um, and start to bend the knees and make sure that the angle of the thighs is the same as the angle of the feet. So if the knees are pointing in, then the feet are going to come in a little bit more. So you can play with that a couple times. And then start to drag the feet towards one another. And notice how all of a sudden it's just like do 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 do. Like you lift right out of it effortlessly. And what I love so much about this pose, and it's taken me years to, to discover in myself, is when I do this, I feel um, a lot more in the back of my pelvic floor all the way up my spine. So as you play with that, maybe you can feel how this activates the base of your core and gives you more awareness, um, not just of the abdomen, but of the back body. Take, add in the arms here, float the hands, and as you exhale, push the hands down as you hover and take a few of these bird swoops as you get really light through the pelvis and spine. And the next time you're down, start to shift the weight over to the right foot and use the bird swoop to play with hovering the back leg. If it's comfortable, you can reach the left hand back and the right arm forward. Take a breath. And then set the back foot down. Come back into goddess. Take one bird swoop at center. And then come into the squat. Shift the weight the other way and take that bird swoop to <laughs> launch over the other leg. You can stay here as long as you want. I love reaching out with my left hand. There's this nice cross lateral action that lets my right leg reach more. And then set it down. And now on your own, you can take a couple of these pulses through center and then asymmetrically to the other side. We've been working through the whole class 
integrating our legs up through the core. So as you take flight, try to feel that sense of the inner thighs weaving into the core and supporting you. Even though one leg is floating, it can still be really supportive. Feel free to pause anywhere that's interesting to you. Add anything on. And we'll just take about 30 more seconds. And when you've balanced out sides, we can meet at center, turn all 10 toes forward. And actually, let's slowly, kind of dramatically, heel toe and the feet in, so you get that internal and external rotation of the femurs. And then we'll meet with the feet underneath the hips. And feel that ever so gentle squeeze of the feet coming together that allows the spine to lengthen and then try to dial it back. Like, let's say you naturally did 50% of your effort. See if you can release and release and release until it's just like the most minimal energetic effort of the feet squeezing and the spine lengthening. And bring hands to heart center. We'll be heading down into Mm, I changed my mind um, <laughs> into a forward fold. So you can do this however is comfortable for you or stay along for the ride with me. Um, let's send the hips back and lengthen the spine forward. Keep that little squeeze with the legs and start to drape the spine over the thighs. Bend the knees as deeply as possible. Bring the hands down and lower one knee at a time. Take a moment in tabletop and then squeeze the legs together and start to circle the hips. And the squeezing of the legs will probably limit how much you can circle the hips. Try to keep both knees anchored. And then circle the other way. Bring the hips to the heels. Bring the hands to the thighs and ever so gently drag the hands forward over the quadriceps a few times, just massaging the thighs. And then start to bring the spine in. So as the hands drag forward, the spine gently rounds. You can push the shins down into the floor and gently rock from side to side. Just make sure you're loose with it so you're not building any tension in the muscles of the back. And then sit the hips over to the left and use that gentle squeezing action to elongate the spine from the bottom up. Take a nice easy twist to the left. If your phone is accessible, you can go to the next track to start um, chilling out musically. And just take a couple of breaths here and try to feel that activity. The inhale, again, pushing down of diaphragm, pelvic diaphragm. And the exhale, as the breath leaves the body, it creates a vacuum, the diaphragm lifts, and that pulls on the pelvic floor, so you don't have to do it. It naturally happens with the breath, and maybe now you can feel it. Maybe you can even feel how that exhale naturally draws the legs together without you doing it. And it's that really subtle, you know, 1% kind of experience um, that takes a lot of awareness to feel. Mm. Take the right foot and step it um, forward. Um, if you want to, you can cross it over. I actually prefer it outside of my knee. And then start to twist nice and easy to the left and and explore the same thing now. It's a little bit harder. It's less obvious when the legs aren't stacked. But maybe you can feel kind of like in goddess pose how there's that activity on the back of the pelvic floor that um, gently drags the sits bones together and lets you feel really supported through pelvis and spine. And then 
Um, twist to the left again so the legs can stack and then shift the hips all the way over to the other side so we can do the same sequence and still see each other. So nice easy twist now to the right. Should be the second side. And just breathe with it. We've done a lot of movement so you don't really have to activate a lot here. We really just want to tie everything back together and hopefully it already feels like everything is so integrated from focusing on that pulling towards the midline instead of stretching in poses like tree and goddess and Virabhadrasana too. If you want to bring the gaze into it, see if the strength can travel all the way up to the crown of the head and then ever so effortlessly let that spiral the whole spine a little bit more to the right. And then gently come out of the twist, lift the left knee, place the sole of the left foot to the earth. Option to cross it over or try it open if you've never done that. It's, I find it just so lovely. And then start to twist the other way. And again, see if you can explore um, that really subtle integration that's possible. I love, um, for me, focusing on bringing the sits bones slightly together helps me use my pelvic floor to stabilize here and remember the breath helps us contract and release so we never want to hold we never want to grip and so next we'll um, set up for our restorative pose um, and this is where you need a couple of blankets and a strap um, you can use a chair instead if you have, but um, today we're going to play with a little bit of forward folding before we come into the restorative pose. So if you have a blanket, yeah, or pillows, couch cushion, whatever you've got, um, basically you just need to elevate the legs comfortably. And the purpose of the strap is so all the muscles that have been working today um, especially the inner thighs that connect to the pelvic floor um, so they can really release as we come into our restorative pose. So you'll take a strap or if you don't have a strap, a scarf would totally work. Basically something long and skinny that you can wrap around the top blanket and your legs. I really like to feel support underneath my knees, so you can play with this a little bit. You can roll the top blanket or just scooch in. Oh. And then tighten the strap so that the legs feel secure. And we're going to recline in a moment, um, but before we do so, you're welcome to play with sitting up tall and that could feel hard here um, so maybe that's enough and you can gently rock from side to side if it feels like you have more space and there might even be like a little craving um, you can allow the spine to elongate forward and do that same thing just a gentle rocking from side to side and then tune into the breath and you can be really subtle here or a little more dramatic by rocking the weight all the way over to one sit bone and then all the way over to the other and just like we've been practicing let the spine follow let the head follow so you're not telling your body where to go it's almost like you're just riding in a current the current is taking you and then when you feel ready, um, actually, I'm noticing I want a little bit more. So give yourself that space. I know a lot of times I tell people not to stretch, but with the legs supported, you might notice like, oh, I can actually lengthen my spine a little bit more. Maybe enjoy some stillness. Maybe massage your feet a little bit. <laughs> Make sure you're breathing. And even though we're not moving, perhaps you can feel that quality of gathering on the inhale. 
that sense of drawing in and expanding and then that offering up that everything pulls towards the center line and you almost like shoo, take off towards the cosmos start to kick the heels forward and when you do that you should feel like the calves and hamstrings push down into the blanket and let that send you all the way back to your reclined pose and wiggle around a little bit do whatever you need to to get comfortable and we do have a few minutes to be here before shavasana you also welcome to stay here during shavasana um, especially if it feels really good there's lots of benefits to inverting it's good for your heart and especially if you stand a lot this can be really therapeutic and take your time wiggling around finding the most supportive position for your shoulders your neck your spine your hips And then let everything start to soften. Pause the music if you haven't already. And let all your focus rest down into the center of the heart. Feel those gentle qualities of the breath. And these restorative poses are more beneficial if you stay conscious. So I invite you to keep your awareness at heart and on breath. Let's see how relaxed you can become. How spacious and free and light. And we'll rest like this for about 15 minutes. So at any time, if you want to exit this pose and Take Shavasana without the legs elevated, that's absolutely fine.
Let yourself be still. And observe that stillness. Notice any impulse to move and get up and get going. And see if you can release and let yourself just be for a moment longer. And then stay in that being as you start to make gentle movements, perhaps circling the arms big in that gathering motion, snow angeling them overhead, and then stretching long from fingers to toes and and feeling that ever so gentle hugging action that can provide so much support and integration. You're welcome to do that a couple of times and eventually slide the legs out from the strap. And take your time waking up the body and preparing to sit upright and Try to stay in that space of being, just being in tune with the physical body, the breath, and even the deeper, subtler layers of consciousness that awaken when we practice. I thought for our meditation we could do some singing together because singing really is um, that same activity of gathering and then offering up our voice and it has similar energetic effects. The practice we just did helps our body feel uplifted and light. Um, singing certainly does that for our heart and our energetic body. Um, so we'll be singing um, Om Namah Shivaya. Um, there's four different little melodies, um, and then it goes back to the first one and repeats. So feel free to jump in once you've got the hang of it. And um, I invite you to notice that gathering feeling as you inhale, preparing to chant, and as you exhale, maybe you have that sense of feeling a lot of that physical support so that you can offer up your voice as um, effortlessly as possible.
Mm. Let yourself relax into stillness. You can close the eyes or gaze at a single point. Mm. Let the focus drop into the heart. And notice how easy it is to be still and relaxed yet supported in this moment. And as gently and effortlessly as possible begin repeating Om Namah Shivaya tied to the inhale and the exhale. Just like we've been practicing through our physical movements, repeating the mantra with focus really is helping us gather energy. And it's subtle energy that builds in the heart center. And the offering it up is to our highest self the self that we're growing into each time we practice. And so as you inhale with Om Namah Shivaya, imagine gathering that richest nourishment at the heart. And as you exhale, imagine all of that energy being deposited in the heart center and the offering it up is offering it up to your highest self this being at your core
And let yourself relax, completely releasing the mantra. If the eyes were closed, ever so gently begin to open them and see if you can keep your awareness at the center of the heart as you start to see the room in front of you and then slowly the space all around you. And just notice how your perspective may have shifted over the past 90 minutes. And whatever balance and uplift you're feeling right now, it's always available with conscious breath. Mm, so I invite you to enjoy this state for the rest of your day. Um, and you know, the work we do, it might feel easy but it is so deeply strengthening. Um, it wakes a lot up. So I invite you to just notice over the rest of your day, if you go to lift something heavy or you're going for a run or you're doing some kind of activity you do all the time, notice if it feels easier or more effortless or you just feel lighter or happier. Um, and I would love to hear what you discover. Uh, so enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks so much for practicing. Aloha, everybody. And the screen's going to go black, but I'm still going to...